And Santa Claus will be up against Mixu to see who gets in for Losers Finals. Oh, that's going to be a good one. Who do you think has the matchup there? That's really hard to call Ooh, him. Oh, I don't know. I really don't know. Especially in Losers Bracket, right? Best of one. Yeah, that's a... I don't know. I mean, Santa tends to go for the real sneaky stuff. So I could see that being real sneaky stuff playtime. <laughs> and uh, like you mentioned before, that does give the one game advantage to Magical. So if it's Mixu in the Grand Finals or if it's Santa Claus, it'll be a best of five. And Magical only needs to win two as opposed to the three to win it uh, and take potentially another 1v1 tournament. Uh, really cementing himself as the player with the most tournament wins when it comes to the alpha phase of Immortal. That's... You mean for Mixu? Uh, sorry, I was talking about the, the Grand Finals, right? Oh, uh, yeah. For, for Magical, for Magical. Did it say Mix? Yes. Magical. magical. Okay. No, because Magical, yeah, they're, they've been getting first place the last couple months. Yeah, the players are asking right now in our Discord, actually, about some of the uh, map and the way the Ancient spawns at the uh, the Ancient, providing a ton of pyre at the 10-minute mark in the center of the map. Um, which does remind me, Mixu actually hasn't played oh, that's these true. newer maps, Embargo or Fool's Bay, really that often, I imagine. Yeah, you're right. So... Yeah, sorry. Uh, remind me, it's, it starts at 50 pyre. Nope, it's oh, 100. 100, right? And it's in divided two games, it's Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Man, 100 pyre for one player is so much. Oh, yeah. Right. Actually, I, it is it is a lot, don't get me wrong. Especially relative to the other sources of pyre acquisition. But then again, most ultimates, from my understanding, have been uh, up a little bit in terms of pyre cost. Um. Which sort of dilutes the effect that the Ancient provides. I do feel like mm. the Ancient more commonly is seen in 2v2s and 1v1s. Um, but we'll see as we are going to Fool's Bay. That was the pick that Santa had chosen as the higher seed in this match. Uh, best of one in Fool's Bay between Santa and Mixu. It's looking like it'll be a fun one. Let's see what Santa goes for. Because, frankly, I have no idea. They could be going for a standard macro game. They could be going for a triple expand again. They could be going for a weird AFK strat. They could be going for some procs we haven't even thought of. All of a sudden, they find the hidden access code to unlock the fifth immortal and just pull it out of the hat. <laughs> I mean, they have... You know what? If anyone would, it would be Santa because they have been constantly going on about Decker. <laughs> who presumably would be... I mean, I don't know if they'll be the fifth immortal. There's... Like, I mean, if Jorah is next, I don't know. Jorah's next, then yeah, maybe Decker. If it's just new immortals for Karath and, and Aru, then no. Be Resh and Aslan, I think. But who knows? Oh, Fatal Air. Uh, did you Fatal Air? No, Santa did. Okay. No worries. Get everyone back in. The real fifth immortal. Fatal Air. <laughs> Literally unbeatable. Devs nerf plus. That's 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 the PVE boss immortal fit layer. <laughs> that's like uh, old kill screens, right, from arcade games. Um, there's this amazing uh, documentary called The King of Kongs, which is about the old school uh, arcade mm -hmm. machine Donkey Kong, right? Uh, which yep. is also where Mario came from. Uh, and and many many of those older games, 80s, 90s, um, they were kind of infinitely replayable. However, eventually the game code would end up where there was a screen where there's a basically an RNG chance that the game will crash once you get to that screen, right? No, um, it was an it was an integer over or byte overflow. Right, right. Well, Cuz basically they didn't have enough memory, they played right? infinitely, but the the thing is they had whatever the logic they used for generating the levels and such was usually was keyed off of something, like mm -hmm. usually keyed off of like level number, which mm -hmm. would increment over time. But eventually, it hits the point where it runs out of numbers. It's not that it run out of memory. It's that numer numerical representation in computers, it, it's not like in the way we do it where it just goes on forever. It's a circle. 
after right, right. you like, get high enough, it loops back to zero or goes negative, depending on whether it's signed or unsigned. But for these ones, it went back to zero. And then that would cause problems. Yeah, I think it was, uh, it took like six, seven, eight, nine hours for the pros to get there, like six yep. plus hours. And that's sort of when you describe the final PvE enemy, right? Is the fatal error. That's like what I was thinking of. Like, this isn't a good thing, right? Now, obviously, we're going to do our best to oh, remove yeah. as many errors as possible, but that's kind of funny, right? Like, like Thanos, the fatal error is inevitable, and the final boss that none of us can run from. Yeah, so we all, at one point in our lives, hit the integer overflow, and then become zero years old? Or negative? That's philosophically starting to get kind of deep and dark. So, uh, speaking of deep, Fool's Bay. Actually, I feel no, like... It's fine, it's fine. You get 254, or 255 free years. That's how it works, right? People live to 255? Exactly. It's, it's like a weird version of like technological Buddhism that we're talking about now where you, you can reincarnate, but after 255 years, your karma better be good, man. Uh, okay. Because anyway, <laughs> that's, that's, that's when the energy overflows. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Santa Claus, always one for the surprise. Mala and uh, Mixu on the Zol. Which is not a surprise, to be fair. No, that's no, a, that's Mixu's. They played Orzum once, but they've been doing the Zol pretty regularly. Yeah, Mixu was his old player before being his old player was cool. Like me. Except Mixu's much well, better than I am. I was gonna say, I, I feel like <laughs> I, I throw my hat at the ring there too, except Mixu would just kinda beat us one handed, right? But Yeah, but I mean I still play Zol regularly. Like I don't That's... ever since Zol released, I basically been playing Zol with the occasional Ajari. Yeah. So let's see now. What do the players have in store today? Well, we have fast expand from both sides. One fast expand so far. Yep. We did get... We haven't gotten off the rails just yet. Oh, oh, altar for Mixu. So Mixu definitely not going for a triple expand. Altar for Santa so... Claus. Both players are going to be a bit more aggressive hmm. this game. Not going to be waiting it's interesting. for any actual combat. Yeah, I think if you're Mixu, you definitely have been watching these past few games, right? And you want to capitalize on the potential leads that your opponent gives you in the case of a quadra base setup by uh, Santa Claus. If Mixu goes for early aggression, he could take advantage. Uh, but, you know, very, very wisely, uh, Santa Claus decides not to repeat the strategy that we saw earlier in the day. Uh, and he's going for something much more traditional here. Double production. Oh, actually, don't don't count it at double. Don't count it at double. They're playing Mala. We've seen triple Legion or triple Altar from Santa before, and that was before the production nerf. I like the cute little nurse right there behind the Bastion by Santa. Yeah. Nero sets out of the way and kind of blocked off. The altar is kind of out of the way. Yeah. If you want to take it out, you got to get to the Bastion first. So that's safe place. Actually, I think Santa might just be going for the 16... No, not 1600 offering. What is Santa going for right now? Oh, well, maybe. They do have a few hunters. They're just trickling them out. They could easily go for 1600 offering. Oh, 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 oh. Sneaky symbiote. Right there for Mixu. What are you oh. up to, Santa? What? I, I honestly think it's just 16 Mass Hunter with Offering. Hmm. Like, it looks like they're going for the, the same kind of build Magical went through four or few games ago. Maybe. I still feel as if the Symbiote... Uh, I, I, I wonder if it's only there to take Pyre. Uh, that is something we saw from Santa before, but I, I, I think especially on a larger map, the raw efficiency you get there, right? Uh... Where it could be working instead, it might not be worth it. Uh, got rid of that tower, so might it might just be a sneaky fast expand. I mean, it is in the position that Santa could just go for an expansion over in the southeast corner or southeast center -ish bit. Santa does have a sizable force moving through the center of the map here. It's going to come across a couple of speedy Icors. 
It was a high ground there, but the Icar is clearly outnumbered. Forced to retreat. Why is he done? Santa Claus not, not being silly about this. They are making sure to regroup, double check, and then no natural. Mix two in for the third instead. Is this going to be expanded? To nope. Nope. Santa going for the th their own third. They're not. Ooh, Santa Claus trying to be aggressive. What are they going to manage here? They got. They have the offering. They're up against the bonus stalkers. They're not going to commit at all. What? Four icors. Okay. I guess the icors are enough of a threat. Yeah. yeah, that must be. Well, four icors so far. Six more, or two more now. Six total. Santa Claus with their own Soul Foundry, probably going to get... Ooh, what are they going to get? The Red Veil, which means possibly Dread Sisters, possibly fully upgraded offering. I mean, Resonant Dread Sister would be a significant put map push composition. <laughs> Same time, though, Mixu trying to find any expansions, maybe find some things they can harass out. Crumbs online Get, on the right side. Kill off a few masked hunters, perhaps? Maybe. Oh, free kills in the army. Complete yeah, nice free picks. kills. Big picks. And the Icors have a speed upgrade, too. So the masked yep. hunters cannot oh, do anything. Oh, and dangerous. Mixu sniped. Mixu taking out the Pyre Miner, or taking the Pyre Miner for themselves. This is dangerous. There's Thrums on the right, speedy Icors on the left. How are you going to respond, Santa Claus? Stuck in the middle with Aru. Residents at least are able to block off one of this one of the ramps, but the thrums are the bigger threat. Yeah, one Maybe. of the things about thrums, even if you dissuade them from the current target they're harassing, they're just able to reposition so quickly. You just keep playing whackable around the map, right? And we sort of see that happening right now. Makes you can take those thrums, go to the second base here, the natural expansion set up, and he's actually setting some of his icor there too. But there is cleverly put an omnivore already waiting for them. Omnivore becoming a significant enough threat. Mass Hunters, not so much, but then Omnivore did soften up the Icors. The Resonance are already necessary as the Mass Hunters can start to actually be a bit of a threat. Actually yeah, so the, pace, hunters. The, the pace of the game in, at the moment is currently controlled by Mixu. If he wants, he can continuously harass. However, he needs to be continuing that pressure and expanding at the same time. It's a not an easy thing to do, and you can make mistakes, as we kind of see here forced away uh, but if you're able to do so you can completely force your opponent to play at your rate uh however it does look like he has signaled the full retreat uh, and has sent all his units back to heal that's likely wise mixu doesn't want to push too hard they can't have been getting some damage done on the on the alloy lines so it's not like mixu's up in behind they had their expansions up they're fully up Fully upgraded, or just before upgraded their third. They've got, or their natural, rather. They've got their tech going. They are doing okay. Ooh, those Icor have been caught out. On the right-hand side, a couple of straight Icor were not attack moving, and the squad of residents is mowing them down. However, this pres presents a potential flank opportunity here. Mixu has the advantage. Santa Claus, his units are in a weird spot behind enemy lines and about to get sandwiched. Yeah, another pincer move from Mixu. Well, the underspines at least push them back, but nothing really else has been set up. Santa Claus has found an escape route, so they are not going to get pincered. They are, however, going to lose map control. Very significantly, Mixu. If you look at this setup, they're like they're clearly going, okay, well, I've got a minute and a half before the boss enemy gets spawned. Let's just make sure mm -hmm. we have absolute total control over everything so we can get that free 100 pyre. Even though at this point they have 200 pyre, haven't used a, a drop. Oh, Santa man, Claus that wall sniping. Yeah, we, we see Santa Claus. He's trying to respond here. He has to respond. Okay, Reign of Blood. Reign of Blood and Prophet's Favor. So all the bonuses on top of the worthing up their, their units since things die. Mixu's not that... using his pyre. No, they're not. Not at all. And that is a shame because they just they just gave their opponent a 30% boosted resonant. Man, that's tough. That's so tough because Mala's effective 
power from her abilities is going to be better than Zol's, but I feel like maybe Mixu had an opportunity there to make that fight be less devastating than it was, where he was the aggressor, he was kind of putting the pressure on his opponent. Now, firmly in the driver's seat, it is going to be Santa Claus. Well, it's kind of surprising. It's the thing about Zol is that, and where they could have really worked out, is preparation. Mm -hmm. Like with Zol, you can set up, like, the biggest thing is the ambush area. They're going to set up an ambush area to have double damage and everything as their opponent comes in to attack them. Like, yes, in the middle of a fight, if you engage without having spent pyre beforehand, there's not a whole lot that Ooh. Zol can do. This is risky, you man. You have to do it in advance. But it was still like, Santa had this, or Mix had this position to work with for a while. Oh boy. Here we go. And now getting flanked. Great hunt coming down from Mixu. Yeah, but no effective combat value, right? Losing the vision can be devastating. However, if you know what your opponent has, we do see the resonance coming from the right side, but it's not going to be enough. Army devastation from Santa Claus. Mixu trying to fight his way back, but only one of each three unit types remaining. The last resonant will go down. See the bloodbound popping up, and there's a couple of stray units around from Mixu, but man, that was a well dealt blow by Santa Claus, forcing Mixu away. I gotta say, though, Mixu did not take that line down. Because remember, Great Hunt does double. I can't remember if it's near Zol, but does double da the attack speed of all your units. That's true, that's period. true. The, the, yeah, and yeah, that, we did see we did see that Mixu took out most of Santa's army at the same time. So Santa can't really advance in the map, which means Mixu still has enough map control to take out the Ancient. Santa's more just trying to rebuild and get themselves set up, while Mixu. Didn't have to worry about that. They already got the alloy only, which admittedly a bloodbound is wrecking, but still they got it. Yeah, Dom, and... excuse me. I mentioned that there wasn't much combat value, but you're right. The double attack speed buff from the new Great Hunt is insane. It's that a is little hard so to see. powerful. It's a little hard to see, but considering that Santa Claus, basically their army value was still even at the end. Santa just, they dislodged Mixu, but they didn't at all threaten them. They just stopped the siege. Yeah, and Mixu with that StarCraft experience, with that AoE4 experience, with that just general game experience, his multitasking ability is next level. You can see he's maintained his macro lead the entire time, higher supply, overall higher army value. There's a fight, though, with he's losing a couple units on the right side. Maybe he needs to be a little bit wiser about that. Santa trying to get more out of this. Losing a resonant or two. The blood oh, those bloodbound. Oh, oh like Santa's. Boy. Santa's practice of the Bloodbounce has paid off. We saw, like, a few weeks ago, they were just throwing them out there like candy on the ground in a swamp. That base is in trouble. But yeah. now they're actually making it, they're making them pay off. And the Siege Bob being set up, too. Just to provide that a little extra bit of support. And it does get taken down, but gone. the base traded, not something Mixie wants to be on the receiving end of. Santa Claus has built up that third, or that, well, fourth, really, over in the pocket while pushing the base. Oh, these resonants aren't helping right now, Dom. The resonants on the right side have yet to, uh... Yeah, a little out of range of the... Yeah, they don't have their own root way. Yep. That is, that's the thing with Mal. You need blood wells to get root way just arbitrarily in the map for resonance. You can't... Well, you don't have underspines. Right, right. Well, we mentioned this, too. This entire time, there's been a small squad of Icor just wreaking havoc in the bases of Santa. Overall, I think he's doing a decent job of defending, but we'll see how that plays out. The action back here on this middle outer base from uh, Mixu. Oh. Um, the action so breathtaking, it literally crashed the game. Just yep. The game the game was too excited, man. Game was too excited, and also kind of neutral. Yeah, this is absolutely a redo. <laughs> There's a, I mean. Uh... If any of you guys think that there's no reason to call this a neutral draw or a rematch, uh, feel free to hit me up after the game. Because, yes, there are some advantages from either side, but this is about as close as they come at a 13-minute game mark. All right. Well, we got to start over. Uh, because it was a mid-match uh, crash, I'll let the players pick new immortals. Message them that. Hopefully they get it. All right. I mean, they were they knew exactly what they wanted to do for that, but... Oh, apparently there's some... Okay, Mixu's pointing out that there might have been some issues with the ultimate activation. Interesting. 
Play Soul. Oh. I'm not quite sure. Oh, okay, so it looks like there's a bit of a miscommunication on how Great Hunt's supposed to work, that you're supposed to place down Zul specifically rather than just where you cast it. So that's Interesting. Like, yeah, I mean, that makes sense. It's a... Uh... One of the effects of bringing the immortals sort of onto the battlefield more dominantly, prominently, uh, well, I guess both, uh, is the fact that you need to understand that when someone like Zol, right, who actually you can control sort of like a pseudo unit, yep. uh, that has to be very clear to players. Yeah, like if you need to do it, if you need to go twice or hit twice, then you tell them. Well, it's more like it should be, you know, when you cast it, there should be a little thick, like a little targeting circle for yeah, yeah like a red bar, right? That works. Yeah. Yeah, I see that chat has caught up to the moment in the match. I'm telling you, there's always one person that's like, hmm, actually, I think player A should have won. So that should not have been actually, a rematch. Actually, I think Drago should have won. Yeah, I'm, I'm down to I know he's not to playing you. right now, but it... Drago should have won. Just give the win to Drago. <laughs> I mean, honestly, if we could be biased, I would absolutely say Drago wins every game. Uh, <laughs> hecklers, if you're out there, you know, I do want to hear your well-reasoned, totally objective thinking, but... No, it's the real, the real Drago expansion is doing it into a game you're not even in... You're not even participating in. Drago for League World Champion 2022. He doesn't play the game, but That's he plays the, the game outside effect. of the game. Yeah. It's like that Master Yi just randomly in your Nexus? That's Drago. That's Drago. Drago. Right in there. Yeah. That Orzum running down your base? That's Drago. In uh, Dota 2? That's Drago. There's an Orzum in, in Dota 2 as well. Yeah, man. And Zul's in Valorant. Huh? <laughs> We're everywhere. Either that or Immortal is just this weird crossover that we never... This is alternate universe crossover of characters that would have existed in other things but didn't. Not in our universe. We want to become actually nerds. So we can talk about the infinite multiverses where there's infinite stuff going on. So, yes... One universe somewhere, there is a League X Immortal crossover. Uh, but that universe is not this one. So I apologize for anyone not that who attitude. may have not recognized what was very clearly sarcasm. Uh, yeah, so Zol versus Mala here. Once again on Fool's Bay. Uh, they made it, what, to like 13 minute mark last game? It, it was yep. really back and forth, ultimately, like. Oh, yeah, no, it was uh, a great game. That was kind of unfortunate that it just crashed 30 minutes in when it was still really even. Right. Well, we did get that happening, so now... Well... Okay, okay, Santa's not going for the same approach as last time. They're going for a much faster Godheart. They're going for a much faster Soul Foundry, or a much faster Bone Canopy, or... The uh, Amber Womb? Yes, Amber Womb. I don't know why I keep calling it Soul Foundry. The Aru Soul Foundry, you know, the thing, the Aru and their souls. Yeah. I don't know. I, a little bit of I, a dance here? Yeah. Ooh, Bone Stalkers. Need to have that very tight micro. Can you get the seal? Oh. Ah! Yes, they Mixu got, got it. Mixu what got a gamer. It with the what a gamer. So there's this tiny, tiny allowance of body block. Right when you in make initial contact that the physics of the game allows and makes you actually time that perfectly. Well, very well played by them. At this point, both players going for quick resonant. Got double I am room for Santa. Mixu just going for the one, but starting with I cores as well. Hmm. I mean, it worked out really well before. They're getting a yeah, lot of last damage in, they're wiping out the mass hunters. It's, it's interesting to me because when I think of i -Cores, especially with the speed upgrade, yes, the stronger units in the uh, auto faction, such as Resonance, just destroy them in straight-up fights. But i -Cores, to me at least, seems so effective at harass, especially on a larger map such as this one, um, that I wonder if they're a little bit unexplored when it comes to the current meta, or at least in terms of what we're seeing today. Mm. Or maybe it's like the dog-looking 
units. I don't want to see them more. Could totally be biased, but I do feel like there might be a little bit more there. Indeed, so... Yeah, that's... That's uh, I was getting blanked out trying to think like... Oh, well, Nixon's is... play of the agrees with me, right? Because he, he's got a couple of icros at least. I mean, uh, I'm really glad to see them. They are, they are a unit I have not seen as much of as I would like to, so I'm glad Mixu's finding use for them. Yeah, yeah, and that, that's kind of my point, is I, I think that they actually, especially on a map such as Fool's Bay compared to Lost Province, which has a lot of angles, much larger map, right? Um, the Harrier style of play can be riskier and take more out of the player attention, but I still think it's, you know... And StarCraft doesn't an analog, right? The what is it, Hellion? Uh, yeah, that would be the closest analog. So obnoxious and very effective. Yeah, the Icor isn't quite as obnoxious. This Lion Splash isn't quite as long. Yeah, but it's yeah, close yeah. to it. Ah, getting some good value here. Oh yeah. Pew pew. Speed up, speed upgrade just popped. Yeah. So even with offering, it's like nope. This is this is Icor's time to shine. Oh my lord, let's go yes. Mixu! Totally not biased, but Sheesh. let's go Icors! Nice I'm biased for Icors. I like Icors. <laughs> well, let's see how Santa responds then. Of course, he's got a ton of resonance already built up. And those uh, do those do those do work. Yeah, like the Icor is like the uh you know the, the air rifle, whereas the resonant is like the large machine gun. Light machine yeah. gun. Machine gun, right? Like, it's heavy, it's gotta move, I mean, it's but you gotta like aim howitzer, it. howitzer, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, like, if it can get in range of the Icors, it's gonna wreck him, but we'll see how the Icors play into that. Now, the Thrum are beelining towards this line of symbiotes. Good response instantly to pull them out. But no real anti here other than the Bastion. I mean, yeah, so there's gonna be... Up. Mass Hunters have been mostly wiped out. There's a few more being built out, but it's just... It's taking a little while. Oh, incubator built as well. Interesting. Multiple incubators. I feel like Santa's actually at a bit of an awkward moment in terms of his own supply here. Speaking of being blocked, his units were being blocked for a moment. The Thrum do get one symbiote. Can they get another before they're dissuaded? Does not seem to be the case. Well, from here, Mixu... And both sides do, do have plenty of pyre. Trying to find that opening to work with. Hey, why not just yeah, use throwing his resonant? That'll that'll help. So, what's the next plan here? What's the next step? Thrum and resonant coming in for a mixu. A lot of resonant actually. Pretty solid transition. Both sides still on three bases. No one's really expanded beyond that. Mm -hmm. At this point, it's kind of gonna get into the next fight. So Santa setting up for fully upgraded offering Mast Hunters. Very, while, very strong. Yeah, while at the same time Mixu just shifting, basically doing Resonant Icor. Hmm. Just full on Terran mech. I feel like we actually haven't seen too much, if any, behemoth usage from Mixu. It, it's been max tier 2 units today, huh? I don't... I, I think a lot of people don't quite understand how strong behemoths can be, because they aren't like that directly strong when they're a bit of an investment. Mm. Oh, big attack in the northern base. And well, from here, it looks like Mix Sue's got. Okay, they got the Mass Hunters down. The He's committed, can't though. Last too long. The Dread Sisters do not last at all. Ah, Santa Claus dangerous. coming around the back. thought the damage has been done. Yeah, losing like 200, 300 it. alloy worth of al. They lost. Yeah. That was like 200, 300 alloy worth of alloy worth of Icors for an entire symbiote line and two Dread Sisters. And look at that! Oh my God, biting off maybe more than he can chew. Now he's got a good return on it. Actually, he takes out three of the symbiotes and then leaves. And this is kind of perfect if you wanted to go away from the Icor army, which does seem to be the case, right? You could just yeah, sacrifice right. the Icor, take as much damage as en many enemies as you can down with them, and then go into the uh, resonance setup. That's exactly what they're doing, as the Resonants are building out, though the positioning isn't ideal. Santa Claus marching right in here, the eastern side of the alloy only. Uh-oh, Mixu. Mixu was out of position. 
You are on the naughty list this year. The rain of blood coming down from Santa Claus. Looks like he's going to commit. There's so many resonance all, here for him. All of the, the abilities, not just rain of blood, everything dropping. The counter ult, though, so from Mix, in. so he's got that attack speed buff. Is it going to be enough, though? The resonance at range incubator it will be helping them out. Spawning more keto is Mala here, but it's Santa Claus on the retreat. It's just Mixu says, you know what, Santa? I haven't believed in you since I was five. You are no threat to me whatsoever. <laughs> and pushes him back. Santa, Santa's not real. He can't hurt me. Exactly. Oh, my lord. Another line of resonance down. We see the root from the uh, Red Sister, but who cares? There's no damage follow-up. Mixu just wallop Santa Claus' army, and he may push this farther. Reinforcements are on the way, but they're taking a little while to be set up. The first couple residents are trickling back. Mixu trying to find the optimal position to work from. That's that's what they need. Santa Claus is taking a fourth as an emergency possibility, but right now, again, it's just got to deal with all these forces coming through sooner or later. Yeah, that fourth is under current dire threat. So if you're a Santa fan, hopefully you get that cancel off. And yep, you see it well done there. Whereas uh, Mix is able to set his space up a little bit easier. The residents actually caught in a weird spot here. Some of them will certainly go down. Does Mixu decide to fight this out, though? This is a heavy commitment from Santa Claus. That's, that's for the best. The residents do take out... The residents for Santa Claus take out all of Mixu's. Well, Hypers did their damage, but it was not enough to hold the line. And now Santa Claus retaking the army advantage. Two crucial things in that fight there. Well done by Santa. A, to get the jump on his opponent. He was able to get the resonance in a position where they were uh, kind of funneled into that small little choke. And B, the fact that the army of Mixu was sort of split 50-50 on the left or the right means he actually had the numerical advantage. And look, he's going for these right side resonance that are stuck. Oh, that is brilliant play by Santa Claus. Mixu overextending a little bit, spread himself too thin here. And Santa Claus is back in this game, ladies and gentlemen. Also worth noting, Mixu has shifted back into I-Cores, which... That's telling me Mix is starting to get a little bit dry on their ether. I mean, it's getting a little low. They've been spreading a lot through the all these residents that just got slaughtered. They got to find. They're trying to find ways of making good use of alloy because that's the only thing they have got. At the same time, though, harassment from the I cores. That's their yeah. use of alloy, and I cannot disagree. That is effective. Well, Dominic, I want to point out that actually most of the symbiotes were able to run away to the main and base of. Santa causes and the game is frozen around the 12 minute mark. It looks like we might have a connection disconnect again. Uh, wow. And that's interesting because it's about the same time period. Doesn't look like we saw any abilities used, and the army value is almost dead even. Yeah, well, that's that's a shame. Hmm. Okay, I think Mix is having some issue. Okay, apparently there's an issue with the netcode interacting with Zul's ability. Yeah, Mixu, Mixu does seem to be mentioning that they're having uh, increased difficulty than you might expect commanding Soul. Maybe. Pro possibly it's not getting buffered properly? I don't know. That's... Mm -hmm. Sorry, let me mute myself. My keyboard's very loud. Well, I'm going to deal with that for now. Oh, those are both really compelling games. Uh, it's literally just... Too close to call. Like, just... I, I do feel like Mixu was, let's say, 40-60, right? A little bit worse off oh, for wear. Um, but there's no doubt in my mind that there are options he could have outplayed from there uh sorry about that guys we will be getting into a third game in this best of one in just a couple of moments so it goes yep. in the uh alpha break yep. the game weeklies all right chat uh, you guys are on a, I believe, a 90 second delay, right, Dominic? That is correct. Let's, uh, if you want Mixu to win, we'll, we'll address this when we can in a few minutes, I suppose. Uh, I want to see you type, I don't know, hashtag Mixu win. 
versus uh, hashtag Santa is real if you want Santa Claus to win. I mean, I could just make a poll. You know, that's way lamer than them going hashtag Santa is real, though. All right, but we, we could. I, my, my opinion, I apologize. It, it is your stream, right? So if you want to make a poll, we can too. But like, Santa is real. Can you make a poll like where they can choose Santa is real? Yeah, I could do that. <gasps> Best of both worlds. Yeah, I would strongly advise folks if you are already in the alpha, if you are currently alpha and playing in these tournaments yourself, um, the evidence that we have on stream is fine, but the reported crash logs are invaluable to us, the developers, uh, finding the information we need to actually make these fixes happen. Yes, catching them on live is like good, we see it in 4K, whatever, uh, but it's really, really important that the game logs actually make it to the developers and the and the developers on the tech team, so we know yeah, what bit, we're looking for. There's a bit in the corner that says game client logs. Mm-hmm. And... Uh... Oh, I can't you can myself. Know. You're in charge of the lobby, Seamus. Oh, excuse me. Um, and my client just crashed, so I'm no longer oh. in charge of the lobby. Okay. That was weird. Hmm. By the way, Dominic, I do not know if stream can see my cat right now, but just because he's button bothering me and I'm on camera, everyone does his will, aka William. Oh. Yeah, the... I think we've been live for a couple of hours now, and it's getting close to his lunchtime, so yeah, he's reminding me that he exists. Cat, uh, <laughs> was up here for a bit, and then he went He went off. <sighs> All right, uh, I am He's back in, in the lobby with you, and Mixo, let's we'll see if we get Santa back in. No one's in charge of the lobby, what the heck? All right, let's just make a new one. Okay. New lobby. I got it. Mm -hmm. Get kitty. Lay down. Don't bite. All right. No. Wait. <laughs> That's a funny comment from Twitch chat. Oh, that's funny. Oh. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, shit. Okay. I... Um... Yeah, I don't feel... Yeah, chat is overwhelmingly voting for Santa, but but that's because Santa's the only person playing in this game right now. Oh, well, boy. Well, Magical's in the grand final, so it doesn't matter eventually. That's true. Like, also, if, the if we can is... ever actually finish this game, and the lobby works, and nothing is working, just, just everything's just dying. Wow. Uh... That is rough. Everything is dying. That. Yeah. We were talking about the 255 character limit, you know, the, this the new techno Buddhism. Mm -hmm. You've got 255 years to achieve enlightenment uh, in your yeah. reincarnation cycles. Otherwise, you're. You start over. Uh, you know, honestly, that kind of makes sense in the context of, like, a lot of animals and plants don't live that long. Well, that's not true. Some plants live forever or, like, really long. Never mind. 255 years is not a long time. Do not follow this new religion. Would not recommend. It's 0 out of 10. Uh, interesting. So, I see three of us in the lobby, and I'm lobby lead. Yep. This will work. Let me move you and me. Yep, I had to restart my client, but it's fine. We're good. Yep. Uh, map. Oh, the map was it was Fool's Bay, but yeah, I I, I uh, don't think the crashes are related to the map here, but it's, uh, in the spirit of fairness, right? If the players who want to change their immortal, I, I'd like to give the option Walter Province. Yeah. All right. Okay. Last province it is. Let me confirm we have all players. Okay. All right, let's go. Hopefully this is the game that actually is the game. And then get the grandfather. Uh, yep, I'm assuming set is good. Mix is confirmed. Rock and roll. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to this 
Final match in our losers finals here between Magical and Mixu. Uh, they have been neck and neck so far, and we are going to go into the decider here. Back on Lost Province, uh, players are able to rechoose their mortals. So interesting. Looks like we're gonna get Zol up against Orzum. Comfort picks for both. Oh yeah. Let's go. Ultimately, the, the more stressful the situation gets, right, the more uh, uncomfortable you might be as a competitor, even when you're sort of at the peak. Uh, it's always really valuable to kind of come back to the fundamentals, your, your bread and butter. Um, and that seems to be exactly what we see from both players at this point in time. So of course, fundamental for Santa Claus with Orzum is doing crazy shenanigans, and they're just going for the fast expand. Yeah, I mean, fundamentally, he's crazy. Uh, his playstyle, at least. So, I feel like he was the he was the OG pioneer of the early Centauri Pillar Rush, though. Back when they didn't have the research on their range. Um, yeah, he, he he's discovered quite a number of strategies that are eventually uh, changed in some way, or or needing uh, to be developed like researched by players to come up with countermeasures because god santa does love to throw at that crazy stuff makes sense That's, i think when you does. think about like all thinking, the tricks like, what, in the bag santa has a big one i was really curious what they're gonna try to do because of course they i mean they had the towers earlier but they can't do much with the empire and broken which is a huge thing they don't have the pillar while useful it takes a lot of pyre to get set up so i don't see it really oh. happening very much I do want to say that Empire Broken, they can use, they just can't use the particular way that they were hoping to, which is the right. Omega yeah. early, As a like, cheese strategy. Cheese. Right, right. Um, As a cheese strategy, it's, it definitely doesn't have that potential. So, with that in mind now, looks like it's going to be a fairly early, consistent Legion Hall placement. And the Altar of the Worthy. Multiple either setups from the Aru player, not particularly surprising, right? Well, it does tell me that they're going to be going for not just, like, upgraded bone stars or whatever. Not that they've been doing that a lot. They're definitely sticking with their resonant-based style. Mm -hmm. uh, no surprise, but it's just worth noting that is no change. Santa Claus, on the other hand, is just... I mean, they're getting their early Legion Halls, probably gonna get... Actually, I don't know. I can't say probably anything. I have no idea what they're gonna do, because they're Santa Claus. Santa Claus does oh, whatever they want. They're sitting on double Legion Hall right now. Double Legion Hall into Relic. Uh, right? yeah. Mixu has built up his forces fairly quickly. The Bone Stalkers making their way into the center field with essentially eight versus Santa's twos and Tari so far means that the Pyre should pretty easily be in control of Mixio unless something crazy happens. That seems yeah. to be, seem to be yeah, the Santa's, case in terms Santa's of how it's playing out. It. Yeah. Oh. Oof. This is awkward. But they're not paying attention? Oh no. Wait, this is kind of awkward oh, no. for both of them. That was what... There's more than Tari here than the Bone Stalkers can handle. Two Bone Stalkers for once in Tari. Yeah, that's not that's not an even fight. Oh, catch another one. That's three for one. Three bone stalker so far for one Centauri. This is definitely worth it for Santa Claus. He's still pushing him back. Can he get another pick here? Oh, They're working. got him. Four for one. Absolutely worth it. Yep, a slight lead, but a lead nonetheless. I will say it's kind of awesome not to see just you know infuse from anyone. Just followed by infuses, right? To like Good, that keep the chase exists. going. Yeah, you're yeah. right. I wasn't sure what to think about the lack of infuse, but the way it's been playing out, it seems to be a net positive. Let's see now. Santa Claus ultimately taking the uh, receiving end of that trade. Oh, Do you I get a little bit of pyre. Color. I mean, they're, sorry, they're going for pyre hard. Them. Like Santa's going for pyre yeah, hard. Yeah, yeah. They got a ton of Zentari. They are, I think they're setting up for as early a pillar as they can manage. And that's 175 now, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yes. Bumped up by 25 pirate cost. Yep. Okay. So 
So the question is, how many Centauri potentially buffed by that pillar with a range bonus, maybe the research as well, do you need to actually take out an army of Ikor? So far, there's only two Ikor, but we do see more on the way from Mixu, and Ikor are so effective against light units such as Zentari. I mean, the main the main thing is that it does summon Orzum. That's a huge difference now. Yeah. So you got an extra like 25 DPS on top of everything else. Ooh, some and you can't kill play. it for a minute. Yep. Orzum does what Orzum wants. Wait, can you not kill the or the Orzum? You can't kill with the pillar. You cannot. Are you talking about the? Uh, you can kill the pillar. You can't yeah, kill. Yeah, the... You can't kill Orzum. Orzum comes the pillar. Also, that is quite the trade deal. I mean, 175 higher. Yeah, seems worth it. True. Oh, all oh, the damage thrums. Damage to those thrums. Yeah. Okay. Beautiful. Don't for resolvers, not just. Hmm. Not just Antari. Phantom is in a bit of a pickle, though. He's got to be aggressive because there are sick thrums that he simply cannot hit right now. He's got one Zephyr, for what worth. Yeah. yeah, but uh, you got to imagine with another Legion Hall almost completed, he's got to be building some more anti-air, but it's got to be a couple of seconds before it comes out, Dominic. And the thrums are just uh -oh. saying no. Nope, thrums, thrums don't let any of that happen. Eight thr or nine thrums, you can pretty much assert your will. I think Mixu realizes San is on track to get a pillar Ooh. and does not want to let them have any opportunity to get it off in their base. Yeah, Mixu has totally put the pedal to the gas right now. Nice pickups. Icor nowhere to go, but they've done a lot of damage so far. Probably just going to commit them farther into the base here. You can see the movement from the center field. The Thrum Flock is on the way. Icor is still wreaking havoc, just being annoying. Santa's own strategies used against them. As the Thrum pick up a couple of workers here. The Zephyr in their sights. And that... <laughs> on the Thrums. Just, just the, the two Zephyrs. They don't even care. Not even probably going to pick them off yet. Okay, three is one too many. But beyond that, no. Yeah, there's just nothing doing right now for Santa. I mean, he, he's he survived the onslaught, but not really due to his own action, right? Just the Thrums decided to go for a different target. And once again, work is being picked off. So Santa, how are you going to respond to this? He's not even getting enough economy back to build additional anti-air units. Has a couple of Thrums, sends, one, uh, sends the wind step in to take care of one, but the Zephyr are not really designated anti-Thrum units. So Santa is still in a bind. Now they are definitely the generalist. Now Santa walking in. I'm gonna walk into the resonance. There's Here's the, the pillar. pillar. That should take this area pretty thoroughly. Ooh, yeah, dropping. it's interesting. Mixu's actually Great coming to well. defend. Mixu does not want to continue the attack. He wants to defend this onslaught. Well, double da double attack speed thrums are. Ex Orzum, are dude. they what they need? Is that enough? Orzum's doing damage! Like I said, it's like 50 per. Holy moly. If Santa comes back and wins this game this way, that would be absolutely ridiculous. But I've been building right up this, now, this entire game, so I... like That would be exactly what they want. Yeah. Orzum's capability, down. being able to hit aerial units. Nice win step forward, picks off a couple of more. Oh my lord, Mixu, what are you going to do now? And Mixu has the army value advantage, but that pillar, Orzum just hanging out? That's proven to be quite the challenge to deal with. Orzum finally goes away. Resident's able to take out the pillar, and from here, oh. Mixu can start getting their game back, but that was We got damage. to mention, too. It was damage, but Mixu has actually sent his Ikor into the main base of Santa this entire time and has been harassing them. <laughs> took and seems to have, low. Yes, sent basically uh, all of the moats that Santa had on the main base of the Shadow Realm there, and ultimately, yes, Mixu took some losses. He lost that third base, but like you mentioned, Dominic, he's got a huge army still. As long as that kind of a play from the pillar push doesn't happen again, and we can see by the pyre, it's not going to happen at least for a little bit. Mixu still in control. 
question from here is, are they going to be trying to go for... Sen oh, no, they're going to get a blood well. Oh, right. Oh, we've seen this before. Pyre, this but is... they just want the seed. Yep. We've seen this before. And not much is being built up quite yet. Just going for that forward. Going for... No expansions, just taking the pyre. Trying to play it safe. My bad. To be slow. Yeah, you uh, not only do you get the pyre for yourself, but this reminds me of older sort of Zolstrats where she didn't have any abilities implemented yet. So you literally just took pyre to deny it from your enemy. Um, because we've seen what the pillar can do, right? And Santa Claus doesn't have enough for it yet, but he's getting close, about 50 away. Yeah, exactly. Drum harassed in the main base of Santa Claus's a single. Oh my god, this Centauri. Oh, there's this Centauri that almost sniped out a Altar of the Worthy that was producing units, actually. Does get the snipe down. But the units are out. Yeah, the units faded out, so... Gets rid of another Aether Extractor, and... Oh, boy. And moat Mixu... Moat. Yeah, Mixu's pushing his choke in the middle farther. He might even commit for this with his Akal. Fairly beefy. Good at taking out heavy structures such as this turret here. But no, no real committal yet. However, the overgrowth army inches ever closer. And one more hop, it will be enough for the resonance to just take everything out. Santa Claus realizing that their their time is numbered. Decides to push in. 30 pyres short of another pillar. Uh, can't quite make it happen. Oh boy, this is tough. A couple of a uh, thrum though. Will be a nice reprieve pickup for Santa Claus. Wait, is Santa going in for a I think I'm trying another base race? I think they're gonna try another base race. Or I feel like a base race push back. Typically Oh, nice pickup from the pyre actually. Does give him enough for pillar. No, <gasps> no. Nah, nah, now we're entering dangerous waters for either player. Zola's is gonna get enough uh basically enough pyre. To have her ultimate in just a couple of seconds. Is Santa going to commit here? It looks like it might be the case. Yep. Here we go. drops. Pillar drops. And let's the see split who wins focus it is out. Important. Yeah, because the surround is huge. From Santa. Yeah. Oh, boy. That's destruction. Some of Santa's units weren't actually taking the fight, but were working on the structure instead, which means Mixu is easily able to win that. Now for the hunt. Still ongoing. Well, yeah, it's just about finished, but that it had its effect. It now makes it with twice the army value, more than almost three times the army value coming in here. And Santa doesn't have a whole lot to actually contest this. Looks like for Mixu, it will take neither crying nor shouting for him to kick Santa Claus out of town. Able to push ahead with those thrums. There's no way to answer. We see these uh, scepters set up from. Santa is like a last ditch resort, right? To technically, there's very limited anti aerial capability on Mixu's side, but I don't think it's going to be enough from Santa. No, the two scepters. I mean, it's going to be a little bit of a pain for the resonance. Actually, more for the underspine than anything else. But even then, it's still. The resonance are doing their job. Yeah, you can see the, the rest of the ground forces of uh, Santa's haven't even healed up completely, so he's really caught in a pickle. I mean, if that cro this yeah. Krobles goes down, it's... I mean, this one over here in the third is pretty heavily threatened as well. Again, they, they do have the one in the corner. They just start building up just in case Oof. they need to deal with the base race situation. Well, in a sort of desperate 11th hour play, we do see that Santa has set up a far base in the corner. Uh, maybe gives him some way out of this game. And he does have a shower to work with, but Mixu, firmly in the driver's seat, simply needs to maintain his lead and continue to control vision across the map uh, so to, as to scout out that corner base. And he should be able to take this home, but potentially a big fight here. Santa Claus has a little bit of power to work with. However, no structures to defend. Nice type there. Grabs enough pyre for a tower, but not much else. Actually, that's not true. No, no, no. They could Empire Broken on the attack. Yep. We'll have to see if that's how it plays out. Mixu 
Might still be in danger if it gets too aggressive here. It's a lot of damage coming through though. Nix's army looking to clutch this one out. Committing here fully. Santa Claus on his last legs. And there's not much they can do to stop this. The Absolver goes down. The Turbish is the last unit alive. Santa Claus has no army at the moment. Desperately trying to rebuild. But no, they are yeah, trying to rebuild. They've... He's gone. They yep. Quit? Yeah, huh. so... Uh, in the case of uh, exit without a GG, which does happen occasionally, uh, players are human, they forget. Typically, we like to see the GG, but in this case, I believe Santa Claus just realized the game was over, so he just quit. No worries. Yep. Yeah, and, I left uh, game, forgot to hit GG. Yep, okay. GG. Well done by Mixu. And that is going to be our losers finals. Wow. Our best, our best three game best of one. <laughs> Last week, we had a eight game best of five and now we've got a three game best of one easy clap means we now move on to the grand finals which will as mentioned before be best of five with uh magical having the winner's bracket advantage so he is 1-0 in this gf in this grand final correct okay so with that, we just need to get them in, and then we can start. We did see a Magical v Mixu earlier today, and it was a pretty... Well, I say that. Magical we went 2 game. Right, Magical we did. did win We the did, but yeah. Yeah, this is Mixu's run back. I'm curious whether or not Mixu's going to stick to the Zol, which we sort of saw the traditional pick. Uh, whether he's going to switch it up with the Orzum that we saw for a brief second earlier. Uh, we've seen both rebuffed by Magical overall, so I think in either situation, Magical the clear favorite here. But, man, I gotta give credit where it's due. Mixie did a really good job, right? Um, mm -hmm. Player that hasn't been playing Immortal as much as some of these guys like Magical or Santa Claus, who we just saw. But he was able to keep the pace up, uh, even dealing with that new and improved, modified uh, pillar from Warzone. Uh, and he's back at the Grand Finals. Let's see what they can pull out here. All right, players are in. Lost Province is our first map, and I believe we are You're good. You're in charge. Dominic. Yep, gonna launch. All right, so ladies and gents, welcome back. Grand Finals game one advantage was given to Magical, so he's up one L on Lost Province, and uh, let's take a look at these immortal picks. Zol for Mixu. Magical seems to be thinking a bit. Or, wait. Yeah, I guess they're thinking a bit. Alright. Seems to be so. Interesting. So I, I do think it'd be expected at this point, right? Mixu on Zol, um... Yeah, Definitely the comfort pick. Like, but really, Magical is actually gonna lock it in and rock it in. Orzum making his grand final appearance. He's been pretty strong after the recent update, Dom. So this will be exciting. Yeah, give it a shot. See how it plays. So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome here on Lost Province to our Grand Finals. In the red, we've got Magical. In the blue, we've got Mixu. Zol versus Orzum. The classic Karath versus Aru. Dominic, talk us through it. What might we expect here? Given that both players are pretty normal in the way they play, we can probably <laughs> expect to see, you know, front... Front load in Legion Hall for Magical, though mm -hmm. not necessarily, but definitely expansion on both sides. Economy focus. Mixu, we've seen before, will reliably go into Underspine Resonant. Magical, I'm expecting, is going to be going for um, probably Zentari into. I don't know, because they've been kind of banging on Hallowers not being that good. There's been a bit of a. Mm. Okay. discussion about Hallowers not being able to outrange Resonance. So I'd like to say Hallowers as an option, I honestly don't know. Beyond that, I could see maybe going to either Sharu or Throne, but that's late game. 
So honestly, for Magical, that... I'm not sure what they're planning on going for. Uh, based off of the last game we saw, though, from Santa, I think it's going to be important to note that it's probably going to be reliant in some capacity on actually getting Orzum on to the field, right? Like, in right. the game, into play, no longer just the regular ability, but actually, like, get the pillar down, potentially get an early Empire Unbroken that's very aggressively laid out. Because um, that's where, at least from my limited experience these past couple of days, uh, Orzum seems to shine uh, when he's actually able to use his abilities essentially as often as possible. Right, which means getting fighting where you have towers, which nowadays can be anywhere, as long as you set it yep. up first. Yeah, very much, if you have set yourself up, Orzum can just go ham. If you haven't set yourself up, then you got strong units, but that's about it. Oh, there, hey, bud. Sorry, but I'm busy. With that in mind, I like to see this early Centauri push. Uh, two Centauri kind of struggled to take a camp, but if you micro well, you can definitely make it happen. And we see Magical has done a good job of that here in center field. Loses some health, but he can easily bring that back with his turret. And uh, yeah, picks it up. Zol, of course, sending out her Bone Stalkers, but either through Volition or maybe just a little bit of a late on timing, Mixu is late here to contest these pyre camps. And that that tardiness is going to cost them. I mean, they did already lose one. Yeah. Let's see what happens. Yeah, Magical can't be greedy here because he did take some damage earlier, right? So. True. I think if you're a Magical fan, the best you can hope for is that he stops this center pyre camp take while the northernmost pyre miner is taken. Um, but it's going to be a very hard task because there's a lot of Bone Stalkers, Dom. Well, that's too many. That is far, far too many. Oh. And, and for it. Magical knows it. Same time, yep. the Magical decided to focus a bit more on the other side of the map to see if they can at least find an opening. And the Reliquary is well on top of the Soul Foundry, so they are prepping for tech. Especially as they just lose the Pyre. Where did we see a... Ah, okay. A very nice center placement there. From Magical, that sort of choke point covering turret. Hmm? Right where we saw... Actually, Santa Claus played it in the mirror matchup, right? We saw this... or uh, When he was playing Orzum on the opposite side, I should oh, say. Oh, yes. Yeah, 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 right. Yes. This might be risky, though, Dom, because the turret still needs to actually, like be created before it's effective in defense. Uh-oh. Oh, yeah, Magical didn't see that coming. Did not see that coming. And the goes Literally, down. that invis. Go down? Well done. Yeah. Do you uh, happen to know how much HP Foundation has? Because I can't imagine that it's I that much. I don't, actually. Yeah, offhand, I don't know. I'd have to check. Oh, nice snipe. Oh, I don't think you can actually click on it to check. So I think it would just be, if it's not in the patch notes, I don't know. Oh, we'll make sure to ask our lovely tech folks later to get that in. And uh... Man, this is interesting. I, I do not feel as if Magical's early game necessarily panned out the way he wanted it to, because now he invested that early pyre, right? To no effect, essentially. Yep. He's being forced to turtle. He's committing once again to this choke point setup. It's interesting because it's a it's a preemptive defensive play, um, which is not to say that Magical can't play defensively, but I'm more used to seeing him in the controlling sort of attacker's seat, you know? Yeah, exactly. Though admittedly playing Orzum, you are opting to play defensively. Yeah, it, it's a tough choice because ideally you'd like to be able to spread your influence. Oh, can he snipe the Pyre Miner? Uh, Upside does not no. get the Pyre Miner snipe. And the Pyre Miner actually reasonably defended by these Bone Stalkers as well. So, yeah, everything is coming up mixed soon. Oh, maybe awesome. I spoke too soon, Ooh, though. Yeah, maybe maybe so. They do have Flying Teapot, which has been taken out, but still, that does mean less ambushing. We did see a Red Veil already built up, which implies we are likely to see fully upgraded ambush on top of this. The, the damage boost and range boost. Yeah, that's going to be so devastating. Just Mixu doing a great job of amassing these Incredibly powerful bone stalkers. A complete shift in playstyle too. We've yeah, not this, seen that's... them go for mass bone stalkers yet. 
You're absolutely right. And I, I will say one of my uh, favorite things to do as a Zolt player is mass Bone Stalkers. They're incredibly powerful. They've got a huge damage deb uh, buff, I should say, after coming out of Invis. And we might see it in effect. Nope. It's dissuaded. Too many uh, powerful units from... I don't know if it's upgraded yet. Is that Whitewood Reaper? Not one, but three? We see? No, five. five. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, they... Oh, two of them pop off. Better be careful. Yeah, they, they've got permanent stealth, essentially. They uh, they can't be seen seconds. by this teapot. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's different than... I I should choose my words more carefully, right? It's not permanent stealth yeah. in the context of, like, it lasts forever, but it's permanent in the sense of they can attack while stealth. Yes. Uh, which, boy, yeah, that could be troublesome. Yeah, it's purely time stealth. Yep. It's like four seconds, you get a stealth after you use the ability if you hit something with it. Which, the thing you hit takes double damage. So they I do just, feel they kill a thing. Typically, it's seen as a bit of a risky play in uh, in in previous weeks of Break the Game. It's not really something commonly chosen by players here. But Mixu, ooh, potential snipe. Oh, these Zeros actually did scout out the base on the west side, but they did not decide to go for it. No, nope, interesting. Go try to take out Bone Stalker, try to take out some of the symbiotes, and neither of those happen. Too many bone stalkers. Hmm. Cannot be removed. You think that was just a supply sacrifice? I don't know. I don't think so. 66 supply would imply they have plenty of room. Hmm. Oh, potential intercept here. The ammo applied. The white reaper is in position. Oh! oh. All the damage bonuses all at once. Not even with Great Hunt. Actually, not with all the damage bonuses. All the unit-based damage bonuses. Oh, this is dangerous. Yep. Forcing out the cancel, the cancel there. Uh, I'm not going to lie. I think Mixu uh, is a great player. Don't get me wrong. But I do not think Magical has seemed really comfortable on this Orzum. And neither do I. I was trying to think where they're going with this. But so far, they've been sticking to Soul Foundry units. Very mid-tech. They have a couple on Jalaria, but nothing built out of... Oh, I speak too soon. There is, in fact, a Barrow of the Crown. Thrones are planned. Okay, and, and to give Magical the credit, it's due. He does have the game advantage. So trying something interesting here when you're already up is fair game, I suppose. Uh, and Throne, our Thrones are very, very strong. So if, if he can actually build enough of them, he can definitely still come back here. But the early game... It's been a little bit rougher than I'm personally used to seeing from him. So we'll see how he navigates the this mid-game. Well, they're getting their towers up. They're getting their turtling. Don't want to have the power for Empire broken, but they do have at least That's something. a cute wall. You see on that the right a, side there? That is an amazing wall. Yeah, that's brilliant. I don't think he, think he cares if it dies. It did the job. Nope. Got rid of two Whitewood Reapers. Yep. Yeah. Ooh, commitment. In the center here, Propolis under siege. Speaking of siege, this absolver is taken out very quickly. I was in the back and at least get a little bit more damage in there, but that's so many bone stalkers. Like absolvers are pretty good against large numbers of units, but not in that proportion. On the west side of the map, well, oh no, the, the oh. bone stalkers gonna kill the thrones off oh. immediately. Okay, that There's been a Centauri harassment squad on this western side of the map, though, that Mixu actually hasn't answered. I don't know how much value it's gotten so far, but it has been left alone. Mixu maybe forcing to commit here. Does get a throne. One free throne is still one free throne. Magical doing a decent sized, uh, side sort of job of expanding, right? Just around the eastern half of the map. There's a natural symmetry that's essentially diagonal across the line of scrimmage on both sides, but it seems like it's basically that west versus east for these players. And Mixu has far more of the center. Yeah. Given that line. But Magical, you can see that he's finally uh, overcome his opponent in army value, so he's got some heavy hitters on his squad. Question is, can he use them in the most optimal way here. 
Three thrones is something. But yeah, with all the... All the bone stocks. Ooh, okay, there's a sword toss. Couple solid sword tosses running into the Absolvers. Plague is coming down on the thrones. And it is more than enough to take them out. But that is at the cost Ooh. of a ton of bone stalkers. So Mixu... Mixu's lost their supply advantage and it's yeah. even things out. That was okay for Magical. Not only did that one throne survive, actually on the top side, there's little hit squad going off and just destroying the mineral worker line here. The alloy not safe, and we can see that, uh, oh, Mixu, a couple of his units here out of position back at Magical Space. But now it's the throw out of position. Oh, nice trap set up. That throne is gone, and from here, it looks like it's just going to be Sharu, possibly, from here on out. Blow after blow, but something you mentioned a couple minutes ago is still true. Overall, the vision control, the center control from Mixu is holding strong, but look at that! We actually see Empire are broken and the counter! Great hunt! Counter can hunt far more for the south, taking out that... taking out the spawn tower. Yeah, Mixu might have won this fight, Dominic, but the north, he actually lost it! Multi-pronged yeah. warfare here. Can the throw make it out alive? No, it gets taken down, and the Bone Stalkers on the third base will continue their siege. But well, Mira, the question is, do the like is this Bone Stalker push even gonna work? Because now right now, Mixu's lost so much army value off of this, yep. they're falling way behind. Yeah, you can see that they, they went for these extra bases on the western and southwestern parts of the map. Uh, yes, that means their economy can't get rolling, but it takes a little bit to get there, right? You need to pay for the base, you have to upgrade it all the way, and, and ultimately, he's actually been taking losses across the board when it comes to the army fights that we've seen. And also, that's it. those bases are catch-up bases. Magical already has their base in the corner. They already have their 3 o'clock right. equivalent to yep. 9 o'clock. So Mixu has to do this just to keep up. It's crazy that... We're basically heading into this sort of accelerated mid slash early game, right? And it's the first time we've seen it so far today. Uh, but sort of overcoming all odds, Magical with the advantage still. Mixu trying to take that away from him has taken out this crucial northern turret that was protecting the vision and the bases that Magical had. So Magical wisely goes for a quick cancel. Uh, and we sort of go back to this brief sort of neutral game. Who decides to strike where? That is the question that will determine the rest of this game. Getting more thrones coming out from Magical, though. I'm curious. I mean, so many Bone Starkers. Dominic, wouldn't you want to see a couple of Wraith Bows, maybe, from Mixu? Eh? I mean, Wraith Bows give you extra damage against air units, but given the mix of air and ground, it might be an over... I think Mixu's on the right idea. That it'd be an overcommitment okay. to go for Wraith Bows. Fair enough. Let's see now. Mixu, northeastern base. This two o'clock position completely wiped out. And Mixu is working on some rocks back at home. So Magical does not actually seem to know this, but he might not even care if he did. Committing to take out this base on Mixu's side. And that base yeah, certainly that works will out. Mixu, yeah. Mixu forced to retreat because of this assault. But their forces are split. Ooh, this is perfect position fight. for Magical. Yeah, you gotta imagine that. In a head-up fight, yes, the supply is roughly even, but look at the difference in perspective army value. Overall, in a large army fight versus large army fight, Mixu will not win this. And they were split up to begin with, so it's making it even harder for them to win it. Yep. And the only upside, of course, being the ambush bonus damage. Oh boy, no way to get away. Nope, especially not with the teapots in there. The Whitewood Reaper simply cannot do their work. There's too much detection. Like, Magical has three of them for redundancy, or two of them for redundancy. Oh, soccer commitment here. Empire Unbroken is the counter, though. The throw into trouble. Does get one. Second get one. Second. Yes, he can. Taken. Still a more cost. coming through. Magical's reinforcements are here, Dominic. Sharu goes down. Thrones not have swords yet. But that's, again, at the cost of Mixu's entire army. Bonestalker's forced to retreat. Now Magical has plenty of leeway to start taking bases, start taking out good chunks of the map. 
Like, this is kind of dangerous for Mixu yeah. having lost what they lost. This is a tough position. I think, in general, Mixu's army, the way it's been playing, uh, it, it works early game, right? Those first 10 minutes, you can really hit and run, just be super aggressive and force your opponents into traps. But if you're going to stick to that style of play, you're not going to be able to match the late game tankiness that this army from Magical has that Orzum can build. So, uh... I mean, my question is now, are there... What's going on tech-wise? I mean, Mixu's already running out of a bunch of their economy, but I don't see mm -hmm. any tech beyond what they currently have, which is largely oh, the Master boy. Armstalker. And while that's good, it's still starting to run into issues with Matt. Oh, with the Absolvers coming oh. in. Mass damage. Top of the Sharu on top of the Swords from the Thrones. Hey, These oh, Stone Stalkers Lord. being countered directly. And the off strike on the corner to stop the choke and the aggression there. Multiple thrones of magical with blinking red HP bars, but the damage has been dealt, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Ah. That's that, that's not ideal. Okay, that was holding right. for the eleventh hour as Mixu once again takes a fight that does not really work in his advantage. He didn't have much of a choice, right? He he kind of had to make something happen there, but unfortunate for him, it did not work out nearly as well as he might have hoped. Well, given that, it's going to be a possible turnaround. Magical now is center control. They have a massive tech lead. Taking out at least one hidden base. They're looking to try to take out the 9 o'clock. It's just defense may be the better option, as we have a bunch of bone stalkers coming into the northeast expansion for Magical. It's worth pointing out that at this point in the game, multiple bases on either side have mined out, right? Both in terms of alloy and ether. They are no longer providing any value, um, which makes these bases and every potential base type very, very important. Yeah, alloy only. Oh, yeah, wow. The natural's down. Natural's still up. The third's down. The main's down. Three o'clock still up, but only for a little while. The alloy only for magical is pretty huge. And this corner base going down. That, I mean, that's prompting Magical's entire army retreat. Yeah, like, that should tell you everything. I don't think they have the damage. The Bowstarkers can't actually finish this. He doesn't have the pyre for broken, unbroken, but he doesn't even need it. And even if, let's say, the bases were sniped by Mixu and his army, Magical is actually sitting on a good chunk of alloy. He's got reserves. Yeah, that's that's a point. I mean, Ether might be actually the bigger restriction at this point. But Magical is just going, you know, I'm just going to expand. You're not focusing on that side of the map. I know all of your Bone Stalkers must be here, so I'm just going to treat it that way. Yeah, it's interesting. It was a nice pickup by Mixu to get that center turret down. Couple of shots there from the Blades. Oh, tries to catch him. Nope, not really any big effect there. Now that leaves the expansion able to rebuild, but Mixu oh. at least took that back. On Same the time, side, though. Harass her thrown on the west, but it did not get much value, actually. No, it, no, it, it did. It did. Most of the value was in Zentari in that area. Yeah. I mean, it does let Mixu know, or Magical know exactly what's going on with Mixu. There's that. Something. This is quite the uh, winning the battle versus winning the war kind of situation, right? Because we see a couple of battles where Mixu is coming back defending and able to pick up a couple of units what looks like for free. However, right. you got to keep in mind that it, it's not exactly for free because the entire time Magical on, is somewhere else on the map, uh, setting up his economy again, or when he just brings in his main force barreling down the center of the map, there's no or, way Mixu can really respond. Or sets up a tower in the corner to heal their sneaky throne. Yeah, that's so cute. There's 75 fire. That is cute. All right, which means not much because the throne's still gonna go down. But hey, it was a it was a cool idea. Honestly, Dominic, we might have jinxed it. That uh, that could have been quintessential caster curse. You never know. <laughs> could have been. I mean, I do have a 90 second delay, so that. That was true. Yeah. Oh, northeast, big catch though. Makes you gonna lose a lot of stalkers here. That's still yeah, enough. it's mixed is still taking out some magical's economy and magical's running lower and lower on saved up alloy. I think Mixu can hear the Eurobeat soundtrack going off in his head. It's the final countdown. Is that Eurobeat? Is that... 
Ah. Rock, I guess. Is your... Yeah. Eh, I don't know. Anyway, he is still playing aggressively. I like to see the life, but with only a Bone Stalker army, we've seen this happen multiple times, right? He gets a little bit of a pick. He gets a small win somewhere, and then everyone else shows up. Strike. Okay, all strike and swords miss, but they do force the bone stalkers away. Remember, kids, it's like when you play dodgeball or uh, soccer. Always pass. Yeah. Lead the shot, right? Lead, lead the bullets. Lead, lead the ball. Yeah. When, lead you're dodge, when you're playing dodge sword, throw the sword where your opponent's going to be. Exactly. Not where they are. Yep. Everyone had that education as a kid, right? Dodge I've, sword. I've got the scars to prove it. <laughs> Shout out to Dominic's Instagram, by the way. Go go follow that, which I'm sure he has. And I totally I didn't just make up. <laughs> Do we even call Instagram? It feels like Insta nowadays. Oh, oh, oh hello, and oh, goodbye. Oh, yeah, that didn't quite work out. Out of the many uses of uh, the mortal spells in the video game, that was one of them. And that's going to, as you would say, be the towel thrown. Indeed it is. And that is, we are into, that's a hell of a game one. Gonna be game two, but yeah. Yeah, that's a 2 0 lead now, right? Uh, that's as winner's really. advantage was given to Magical. So he's sitting at match point, and we need to see essentially a reverse sweep from Mixu. Uh, Mixu had a really nice opener, but you got to imagine that in the next couple of games, if he wants to make this comeback happen, he's really going to need to kind of, uh, let's say, spice it up, right? Get some variety in his army. Yep. So from here, it's it's going to be a question of how does the next game progress? Because that game was back and forth. There was no point where Mixu was completely dead at yeah. the end of it. Absolutely. He was showing signs of life, even like to the bitter end, right? When he was mm -hmm. uh, facing a Herculean task, he was still able to sort of find it within himself to continue pushing aggressively, right? And, and take the turret here, take a couple of units there, etc. Uh, so looks like we are going to go back into Lost Province and everyone right. is ready to go. So bring it back. We shall proceed. Uh, yeah. So Orzum, magical, all of a sudden an Orzum player, question mark? Because I was, guess that was weird. I mean, they, I've seen them play a bunch of stuff, but that's I mean, definitely not the one that they've been playing primarily. I'll be honest. I was critical of the first couple minutes did not seem particularly clean, but he weathered it out against Mixu, which is no small feat and was able to take the win. Think they'll run it back? Nope. Well, <laughs> I mean, I do think they'll run it back, but they don't. They they instead decide to go for the Mala instead. Interesting. Guess a more sure thing in their head. It did take a little while. Like, did some false starts trying to set up for for all that. Yeah, I, I do think that uh, the Orzum was an experiment, and whether that experiment proved successful or not is ultimately. You know, at the discretion of the man who put the hypothesis down, which is magical, but ultimately it got him to win, right? What more is there to prove right now? It got them the win. It was a bit of a grind, but it did get them the win, and they managed to get some cool Empire and Broken shenanigans going. I think that, like, mm -hmm. honestly, that Empire and Broken in the top right corner was a huge part of what made the game work for them. The fact yeah. that they were able to take the northeast bases, even for the, like, took them a few passes to hold on to them, but still, they took them. Yep. They took them. Back yeah. into Lost Province, folks. Again, it is Magical in the red and Mixu in the blue. Aru v. Aru. Aru v. Aru. So, given that, I expect we are going to be getting some resonant shenanigans. That's how Aru v. Aru has been playing out today. Um, what? Who's who's tabbing? Oh, did you see those pings? Yep. I'm sorry, that's new. Did you did you ping? Yeah, I had a little bug. If you alt tab and then you read, oh, come back in yep, yep, and you hold yep, it. Yeah, but I did not that's... know we can spectate to spectate tab or uh, ping. Excuse me, that's interesting. Oh yeah, I think it only pings to spectators. I assume so. Should anyway. Yeah. But... Yeah. 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 I thought you were trying to point out, I was like, hey, Mix is going for something! Mix is going no. for something! It's like, 
I, it's, Mixer there's at the there. base! It's Mitsu some... has nothing there! There's nothing there at a time when they wouldn't have the money to afford it! Look! Look! It's like, it, yeah. Maybe that's what he wants you to think. He's playing Zol. Yeah. Invisible okay. bases coming soon? The answer is no. Not soon. Not ever. Hopefully? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not designed. What would the implication Maybe. of uh, uh, invisible base be? I, I'm trying to think of like my limited experience in RTS. I feel it's... like I have not seen that. Like, well, it like depends main... on what you're making invisible. Because I have seen it, and it depends on what you're making invisible. But it's mostly just matter like a of... uh, town hall base. Really? Not okay. Not a town hall style base. More the kind of more decentralized okay, yeah, total yeah. annihilation subcom style base. Hmm. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Where it's yeah, the production can be hidden or the yep. resource gathering can be hidden. I'm not. I mean, the implications generally have just are just kind of the same as normal, unless you have a lot of harassment going on and find it. In any event, that's not the case right now, and uh, I don't know what's going to be in the future. I, I I'm not designed. <laughs> I mean, they have design folks in your chat right now, so... I know! We'll ask them! If anyone was... Yeah, exactly. No pressure, guys. So, uh... Magical if they give you a little two... smiley face, you know that they, they can't tell you right yeah. now. Yeah! Exactly. Uh, remind me real quick. Five versus two. Who wins that? Uh... Two? <laughs> I want to say Yeah, two. Bone Stalkers. The five Bone Stalkers versus the two Best Hunters. Uh, Magical's up to something here, but I'm not quite sure what it is, and he is not mm, at present. It, oh, it's not what I think it is. Uh, oh. It's not 16 Mass Hunters. It's something else. They're not going for Mass Hunter offering push. Not directly. They look like they're going for run buys. They're building another, yeah, altar, and they Ooh, are... Very, very magical play. Did they make the timing, like, perfect here? Because they might actually have offering in a couple seconds. Like they literally might help. I think they're gonna burn right offering right on run by, but well, I think you need to retreat right right or, or to fight. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. We're gonna find out. All right. Well, run, it... run. It's right. See, two wins. Told you. <laughs> two two wins, I guess. By yeah, not by fault. <laughs> uh huh. Uh huh. It's the only way to win. We do see a couple of Zakal now joining Magical's forces. Uh, not upgraded yet. That additional damage that you get from the uh, charge up Zakal shot can't be very good. However, Zakal are pretty good against heavy units, right? Due to their bonus damage. Um, yeah, and structures count as heavy units, so they can snipe Acropolis fairly well. Ooh, yeah, more we'll importantly, oh. they're... Oh, okay, he's on. okay. We have the offering. We have the red the red harvest to make it the healing happen, mm -hmm. make the kittles happen as well, just in case. Oh, big picks. Oof. Kittle popping, but that Malice Summon didn't do as much as I think Magical was hoping for. Still, yeah, there's a lot on the way. of reinforcements coming here from Magical. Reinforcements on the way. Zakal doing a great job keeping the Ikors from just running away with the game. Oh, this timing attack is so deadly by Magical. Makes you just might not have the forces to respond. This is tournament point that they do. I mean, the Ikors are doing their job, but it's just the Mass Hunters are simply not fighting them. They're just letting the Zakals take care of it. A handful of Mass Hunters are there for damage, but not enough for the splash damage from the Ikors to actually work. That being said, the Ikors are able to get into a much better position now, and that means Mixu could push this back. Reinforcements are trickling in from Magical, but it's simply not going to be enough if they lose this army. So they are gradually doing... Zakals are down. Mass Hunters are all that's left. Reinforcements from Mixu spreading out among unit types. Thumbs up as well. One more Zakal to try to hold the line with the Ikors. The Ikors being focused on the Mass Hunters. It's going to be enough. Magical well, gets pushed I'm back. Does not take out the base. Loses their entire army in the process. And now... Well... Done. And now Mixu has a chance to turn this around. That was brilliant micro overall decision making there. You saw multiple different aspects of micro involved there from Mixu. He had to micro to make sure his workers didn't get harassed, keep them safe. He had to micro his units kite up oh, to that high ground, bring the thrum in. Yeah. Magical was able to expand on top of that though, so technically the stalling of his opponent's army and building his own base was 
nice, uh, but maybe didn't get as much as he wanted overall with the offensive. Well, that is that is how it can go sometimes. But magical, just playing it careful now. Don't want to push too hard. They know Mixu's probably taking some pyre. They know that Mixu definitely has taken the army advantage. Also, thrums. Yes. Many of them. Half a dozen of them. That's scary. But also, a significant ether sink. Which Mixu has. Which Magical has not spent. Magical switching into. Are they getting resonance? Are they getting Red Veil? Ooh, are they going to go for hmm. an upgraded offering or Dread Sisters or both? I'm still trying to be as annoying as I can for Mixer here, but ultimately enough mass hunters for that generalist unit with the offering and then the potential additional upgrade on the offering. Definitely going to scare the thrums for now. Uh... Thrums from the side. Erevors are up, but not enough for the symbiotes to be safe. Thrums going around the back. The Bastion won't actually even be bad, even be bothered. Yeah, this is a bit a bit of a mirror situation, right? Totally different troop composition, but where the very early minutes of the game we saw Magical be aggressive and then expand on top of that. Now a complete reverse of the script here. It is Mixu with the Harriers of two types and just not letting a Magical have any room to breathe. That. They're trying anyway. Magical manage right now being oh. army value, but if these thrums oh, go down, catch. three thrums? Oh. Four thrums? Four thrums. Four thrums. Alloy lines are safe. At least from those thrums. There's a couple more thrums coming in that will be a threat to the alloy lines <laughs> once again. But Magical knows, at least for now, there's only two thrums, which means that alloy lines are not going to be threatened. They can go out and grab some pyre. Maybe pick off a base if it's too vulnerable. See if they can find something. They do have Rain of Blood on deck. Or, yeah, they have Rain of Blood on deck. Yep. I believe Zol's ulti might be the only 200. Oh, no, that's a 175 as well, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, 200 are Jari's. Salvation's 200. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. Uh, 200 pyre cost in terms of ultimate is only on a Jari right now. Yeah. Post rework. Let's see. Dread Sister Residence have some nice combo capabilities, right? You get the yeah, root, root down. Root into the splash And then you damage. get the splash. Yep. Beautiful. And if you have enough mana, you drop Birthing Storm on top of that, and you get a bunch of Kittle. Yep. Don't you just love when you combo on top of your own ability? Synergies are fun. Uh, <laughs> Make three has a really strong Speaking of, now's the time. Though. Oh. Holding the thrums there, actually. Gets a couple of picks here. Not bad for them. The slow as well. Nicely done. Thrums. Are they all going to go down? No, I think only two survive. Two survive to tell the tale. At the same hey, Dom. Uh, Where are those survivors going? <laughs> yeah, good question. I think they're just... Mm. Are, the, are they... Oh, did you see is maybe? this a symbiote run by? Is this... Wait, this is legitimately yes! just a symbiote yes, run by? Yes, it is. For no other reason than he can. You just have the symbiotes available, so use them to kill your opponent's forces. Okay, that's new. That's cool. Yeah, I guess. Uh, ultimately, I mean, that was a weird move there, but Magical is now in the lead, so it worked, question mark? Oh, he's setting up a bunch of siege balls here. Okay, Big great. Hunting from Mixu. Good timing on top of all the residents being set up, but that just prompts the retreat. Magical have staging a shooting retreat, waiting out the great hunt. You're more than fine. Now, once the Great Hunt is over, then Magical... That's just a little behind an army value, to be honest. They're not doing too hot, all things considered. Magical... Not as many resonants. Not really much of an anti-resonant force in air units. They had the Dread Sisters. They still do, but that's... Against resonant is somewhat limited. 
We've seen this position before, right? Mixu has the early yeah. sort of early mid game lead. The question is, can he actually end it out? I feel like the longer the game goes, the more magical finds his comfort zone, finds his stride. I love this aggression from Mixu already, sieging up on the high ground, oh, forcing oh, oh, the behemoths, cancel. Behemoths, behemoths, behemoths are coming! Behemoths oh, are coming! Oh no. Deep Nest is on the way. If the behemoths drop, Mixu oh, has boy. not built anything to contend with them. Yeah, and they have such a good match against Resonance, right? Just oh, absolutely yeah, they, they, they obliterate destroy. them. And Magical seems to be fully aware, like, no, I, I'm getting Behemoths, what do I care? You can just, you can go ham, I don't care, defend, I have a token force on defense to try to at least save something. Right. But mostly just, yeah, put you out of position, force you to mess up, and if you do go ham, I got Behemoths on the way. Makes you going for the defense here. Doesn't maybe know what his opponent has planned, and doesn't actually have the main state of his army, right? It's split across two fronts. He does have enough of an army to force the enemy away, and actually, potential catch here... Oh, the pincer from Mixu. Magical losing quite a few units. Dread Sisters are out of mana as well. Magical does have enough pyre for a red harvest, but they did just use it, so it might be still on cooldown. Same oh. time, there's... Ooh, the, that move speed bonus coming in from the Prophet of the Hunt for Mixu. Summoning Zol, doing some extra damage. It's going to be enough. Not Man, really the mass hunter so reinforcements. Strong. Yeah, yeah just... fully upgraded offering. Yeah. The attack speed boost, the movement speed boost, just the generalist nature of the units. Especially when the residents aren't able to deploy because they just get swarmed so quickly. Magical able to dissuade Mixu's aggression and the behemoths have been built up and uh, they're incredibly slow. But crucial to note, they have yet to be scouted, if I'm not mistaken. Mixu doesn't know that they're there just yet. And there's currently three of them on the field and another two on the way. I haven't seen them get upgraded quite yet, so there's still only two kittle each, but I mean, let's get upgraded. That's gonna be that's gonna be enough, I think. Nothing has been built other than some bone stalkers to hit up and an underspine, and there aren't enough of those to be a problem. Honestly, it reminds me a little bit of the early surrender we saw when we saw the behemoths come out uh, earlier today in the tournament, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. I was thinking the like, same thing. Instant GG almost, um, oh, just yep, from makes you understanding that it was the win condition. All these behemoths have four kittle each. This is going oh, to boy. be really difficult for Mixu to deal with. That being said, though, smart base to take here, right? He hasn't oh. really seen any okay. uh, any action at all from uh, Magical Horse Forces. Has the I mean, map again is split east again. west, so that's yeah, reasonably safe. Oh boy, the pressure though. The moment those behemoths are shown, it is on. Given the lack of anti I don't think they've been shown yet. But yeah, Magical's trying to find that optimal position to get them set up. Mixu kind of smartly splitting up their forces, not letting all their residents get in one fight at a time. <gasps> Wait, what are you doing? So it's like, oh, they're going to do a harass push. Wait, no, they're not. What's what? <laughs> Now, nah, oh, here come the behemoths. Behemoths have revealed themselves. Boom, 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 boom. Underspines do have anti-air capability, but overall, these behemoths are really not going to be too worried. We say as the behemoths get pushed back because oh. the kittle can't last long enough. Yeah, yeah, like the, the kittle actually got mowed down, but they did get a, a little bit of damage in. True, I got rid of an underspine. That is a lot of behemoths, though. It is, and you can see that their white bar is fully charged up, have their entire supply of Keetle. There's one resident, Ooh. there's two residents down, more to follow. Four, Certain... three, four. Oh, boy. Now be a good time for Rain of Blood. Not gonna lie. Oh, Red Harvest works too. Get the extra Keetle off the kills. And all of a sudden, Ooh. what looks like an even game, firmly in magical control, instantly the GG coming out. Ladies and gentlemen, congratulations. Magical wins the Grand Finals 3-0. Well played to you. That was a smart use of the behemoths coming in there right at the last, well, not last second, but out of the clear advantage that was there, the behemoths are are taking it. That's it. That is the, just what I wanted to break from Brood Lords. That's so hilarious. Mix it, mix it with the shade after. Obviously, all the competitors, uh, their rivalries, like, Good sportsmanship yeah. to the extreme, but that is pretty funny how he said, uh, oh. just, just what I wanted to break from. <laughs> and the well, I mean, the lords are a bit of a pain in Starcraft, so that's fair.
Yeah. But yeah, that is going to be it. So thank you to all the players for joining up. Congratulations to Magical for getting first place and Mixu for taking second off of quite the long break. Mm -hmm. And thank you, Simus, for handling the tournament organization as well as co-commentary. Always a pleasure to be on and thank you for having me. And as always, thank you all of you for watching and have a good uh, night, everyone. Yeah, uh, just real quick, Dominic, if you don't mind. Uh, there is nothing to announce currently, but uh, I would highly advise folks, if you are interested in competitive Immortal at any level, uh, stay tuned to our Twitter channel, wink, wink. Our Twitter is, uh, of course, at Gates of Pyre. Uh, and then, Dominic, if you wouldn't mind linking our Discord as well. Um, I, I think... did it a minute ago. You are or way ahead ago. of the game. No, no, thank you. Uh, but yeah. Uh, really always a pleasure to see you guys come out, compete, play, watch, uh, and I'm hoping that we can have some banger events in the future. I am very much looking forward to it, so until then, have a good night, everyone. Thank you again for watching, and come back next week. Bye! See you.